From 3 to 6 p.m., there will be a cross-cut demo and competition at Block Mountain Slate and Stone. Slate and Stone may break my bones, but bloody noses always freak me out. At 4 p.m., we find out who has the best car in town, with the Car Show Awards being held where else but on the Greenway. From 6 to 8 p.m., there will be a community barbecue at the E.L. Johnson Pool Park. This is where you can turn in your autograph books. From 7 to 9 p.m., there will be a sock hop at the E.L. Johnson Tennis Court with a crazy sock costume and hula hoop contest. Then from 10 p.m. until whenever, there will be a drive-in movie again at the E.L. Johnson Pool Park featuring the 50s classic Rebel Without a Cause. Moving on to next weekend's activities in Plains, the Plains Paradise Farmer's Market will start the season off on Saturday, June 13th at 9 a.m. till noon. It will take place at the Wild Horse Elementary School on Main Street. There's a small charge for vendors. However, they can choose to display their products on a week-to-week -week basis or for the whole season. The market is open to baked goods, crafts, produce, and more. For more information about the Plains Paradise Farmer's Market, contact the Plains or Paradise Chambers of Commerce, respectively, at 826-4700 or 826-4700. Three, four, four, seven. It was as if Mother Nature knew the weather needed to be perfect for the launch of the first Seeds, Soils and Starts, a special event of the Thompson Falls Market last weekend. Sixteen vendors lined up in rows, selling a long list of items from indoor and outdoor plants, seeds and soil additions to pottery, jewelry and leather goods. The market, which will start its official second season on June 27th, was well received by the community with over 150 visitors who visited, as visitors often do, the market steadily throughout the four-hour event. The chatter of friends and neighbors greeting each other and catching up on news could be heard throughout the day. It was as if everyone decided to emerge from indoors after being cooped up all winter to visit the market. Do some shopping while soaking in the sun. The Thompson Falls market season is every Saturday beginning June 27th and runs through September 26th. Each weekend will feature in-season produce, a local nonprofit selling lunch, concessions, live music, educational booths, and a variety of handcrafted merchandise and baked goods. The market takes place on the west lot of the Falls Motel at Lincoln Street and Maiden Lane. For more information or to sign up for the weekly market newsletter, go to www.thompsonfallsmarket.com or call market coordinator Katrina Wright at 406-827-3559. Bet you can't do that, Sanders County. Sanders County Sailing Event Committee is hard at work developing the third annual event, which is scheduled to take place June 26th and 27th throughout Sanders County. The deadline for signing up for discounted participation is May 31st. Why pay for participation? Well, I'll tell you. The funds raised go directly to promoting the event and driving traffic to the variety of sales. The event promotes in local and regional papers, online event calendars, posters, banners, and by simple word of mouth. Organizers feel that the number of shoppers is going to increase significantly, in part because the economy entices bargain hunting, and also that it is the third year and more people are aware of it and seem to be excited. Remember folks, the more people to sign up to hold a yard sale, the more shoppers will have a reason to come back year after year. And also, the earlier people sign up, the easier it is to get maps and directions developed and posted to the event site. The Sanders County Yard Sailing event offers residents an opportunity to help improve the county economy by earning money from selling unwanted stuff. Registration forms are available online at www.sandersailing.com. For more information, call 406-827-0404 or go to the event website. That sounds great. Looking for something to do during the day on 4th of July? Well, uh, actually, my family and I are that thinking That sounds about, lame. Uh, anyway, I know your family, and they'd be much more interested in the one-day event known as David Thompson Days. David Thompson Days? I thought you said it was a one-day event. You can't be too picky about this name thing. 
<clears throat> anyway, the event will take place on July 4th, starting at 10 a.m. with a parade. It will then be followed by the Mountain Man Reenactment Rendezvous Camp in the Rose Garden Park. The event will also feature two showings of the locally produced Shadows of David Thompson. <laughs> Hey, there you go again. This, David Thompson's only one guy, and he's producing many shadows. Shadows of David Thompson. Maybe he has more, one, more than one source of light or something. I don't know. I know I do. <clears throat> it's also rumored that jet fighters from the U.S. Air Force will do a flyover sometime during the day's events. A true testament to this forgotten American pioneer. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of forgotten, uh, maybe you've forgotten that if David Thompson had his way, we'd all be on Canadian soil right now since he's Canadian. Oh, well, at least he's not French. You really need to stop doing that, though. Stay tuned to future episodes of The Broken News for more updates. In fact, <laughs> updates. <laughs> In fact, you should watch The Broken News every day, all day. 24-7. You will get stupider. It's true. We are. We're much stupider. Than uh, you. The viewer. Because we love you. I was talking about you. Me? Yeah. Okay. And now it's time for our weekly shout out. Barb Mosier, co-owner at the Conoco Feed and Fuel and Chamber of Commerce official, I might add, conducted a little survey recently. Giving her employees 50 $2 bills, she instructed them to hand out the bills randomly to patrons of their establishment who were then themselves instructed to spend it locally. These bills had a slip connected to them that had five spots for area businesses to fill out when they were spent at their business. After all five lines are filled out, the bills are sent to the local bank to see where they've traveled. Above and beyond the whole giving people a free $2 to spend somewhere locally thing, Barb Mosier is deserving of our weekly shout out for pointing out that money spent locally can have a much greater impact than one may think. I think I'll make my own $3 bill and see if local businesses will start accepting it as currency. I'll call it the Justin note. What do you think? <laughs> I think you need to get your head checked. Well, is it lopsided or something? Yeah, or something. <laughs>